And now if you could all please stand for the graduate procession. Thank you.
if you can all remain standing for the academic procession. Thank you. Please be seated. Ian and Erica, a green at Uishla, foil to arrive. Could you ensure the shot in a run for Dov Octony or Didakish or Alamori and Collage too? Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this graduation ceremony at which third level awards will be conferred on learners of Griffith College. Our panel members include Professor Dermot Hegarty, President of Griffith College, Dr. Frank Scott Lennon and Ronan Fenelon, Directors of Griffith College, Dr. Neil Meehan and Dr. Robbie Smith, Head and Deputy Head of the College's Journalism and Media Communications Faculty, Karen Sutton, Head of the College's Law Faculty, Professor Wallace Ewart, OBE, Kevin Farrell, Director of the College's Leicester School of Music and Drama, Tony Perry, Head of Pulse College, Karen Casey, Manager of the Leicester School of Music and Drama, along with the Programme Directors, Faculty Lecturers involved in the delivery of the College's programmes. I'm Dr. Thomas McGuckagon, the College's Director of Academic Programmes, and I'm delighted to have the pleasure of being your MC for this graduation ceremony. Con Tusa Correlation Gelora, Iramanish, Erntolov, Dermot Hegarty, Ukhtaron, Kolosh, Diogrefa, Lauerteling, Herkown, and Kolosh, I would like to begin the proceedings by inviting Professor Dermot Hegarty, President of Griffith College, to deliver a conferring address. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, colleagues, graduands, and ladies and gentlemen. Graduates, today is your day at the mountaintop. Now the whole world is before you. Here you are rewarded with a clear vision of the way ahead. But do remember that the reason you climb so high is to understand how small is the world around you. <clears throat> this is truly the global viewpoint which you hope to have given you here in this global village, Griffith College. Today is your day, so treasure this moment. It will live vividly in your memory for years to come. An academic award is not an entitlement of rank or class. It is earned through many hours of mental toil and diligent application. So no one can take this from you. So wear your gowns with pride and hold your qualifications in the high esteem they deserve. While today is your day, 
as we celebrate your success. We should pause to give thanks to those who have contributed to it. Now, in the time-honoured tradition of Griffith College, I'm going to ask the parents, partners, families and friends to stay seated while I ask you, the grand students, to stand up. <laughs> now, I want you to turn around to your partners, families and friends and express thanks to them for support you have received over the years by acclamation, cheers, applause or any way you like. <laughs> you may sit down. I noticed there were some eager photographers anxious to get photographs of you at that moment. Don't worry, you'll get ample opportunity to catch them individually later. Um, can I say um, that, that, that my uh, secret agenda on that is, is that if, if anybody asks me how the graduation speech went, I can say it was interrupted with applause. <laughs> As president of the college, you would ask me to acknowledge the work of my colleagues as members of boards, as heads of faculty, as lecturers, administrators, and librarians whose work contributed to your success today. I'm delighted to welcome our distinguished guest, Ms. Jocelyn Feely, the recipient of the 2009 Griffith College Distinguished Fellowship Award, and her husband, Paddy, uh, and also her colleagues and relations. I welcome my great friend and music mentor, Dr. Veronica Dunn, who needs no introduction, and the Honourable Mr. Justice Roderick Murphy, legal colleagues and associates, Killian Balfe, Jerry Carroll, Patrick White, Dermot Cassidy, and our friend, Eamon McCann. Our education colleagues, Tony Perry, Michael Kavanagh, Tom Boland, Kevin Farrell, John Walsh, and Joseph Ryan, director of THEA. While the global village is now yours to inhabit, pessimists may tell you that globalization leads to the transfer of jobs through offshoring, abandonment of culture, exploitation, and depletion of natural resources, the rise of multinationals at the expense of indigenous SMEs and of the national exchequer, and the weakening of regulation. The former Secretary General of the UN, Ban Ki-moon, put our responsibilities in the context of globalization quite well. In these words, we are the first generation to be able to end poverty and the last generation that can take steps to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. Future generations will judge us harshly if we fail to uphold our moral and historical responsibilities. Christians among us might put it this way. Remind us, Lord, as we sit down to eat of fishes, loaves, and water turned to wine, these miracles that you each day repeat as sun and earth give life to your design. As we sit down to eat, we should remember that we must both sustain and share these miracles of creation. In response to this, some of you will say, we should turn our backs on globalization. However, the optimists among you will acknowledge that these challenges create great opportunities. Remember, you are already globalized. Your car is probably German. Your vodka is Russian. Your pizza is Italian. Your kebab is Turkish. Your democracy is Greek. Your coffee is Brazilian. Your tea is Tamil. Your curries are Indian. Your electronics Chinese. And your numbers are Arabic. And your letters are Latin. And particularly remember today, your education is Irish in this island of saints and scholars. <clears throat> so is the challenge then to accept that ours is a globalized world, but to limit its destructive effect? Should we travel less by air, cycle to work, eat less meat, refuse to buy our food plastic packed, or is there an alternative? Now it's your job to be the innovators, to find the alternatives that will allow you to maintain your current lifestyles, but in a more sustainable way. As you launch an exciting careers, and I do my best to depress you, I'm reminded of the patient who confided in a surgeon, uh, I, I'm very nervous, doctor, this is my first operation. 
To which the surgeon responded, I know how you feel, it's my first too. <laughs> and I know some of you may be nervous uh, because this is your first graduation. I could say it's my first too, but unfortunately <laughs> there are too many people here to catch me out that would catch me out on that. Um, but uh, do look at these challenges as, as Henry Ford did. We're all faced with a series of great opportunities disguised as impossible situations. Sustainability presents opportunities for you, such as finding biodegradable plastics, cheap production and storage of hydrogen for transport. Uh, I'm convinced in 10 years' time, cars will be driven by hydrogen rather than by electricity, or indeed by electricity generated from hydrogen. Nuclear fusion, also to address our power needs. Inventiveness in bioscience, enabling meat production without carbon emissions. And there are opportunities for you as, as, as facilitators and managers of these processes, not just as inventors. And if you have facilitated or managed any one of these problems, you'll probably come back as a distinguished alumnus or alumna. And I'm just wondering, which one of you is going to be the one to buy Greenland? <laughs> Let's face it, we're all entitled to our trump card. <laughs> But your trump card is surely your cultural globalism, where you've enhanced each other's culture. You've made long-time friends with different cultures. And some may end up in long-term relationships or marriage. But if you do get married, do engage a Griffith qualified photographer <laughs> <laughs> to protect against the mishap occurring to a couple who had their photographs taken outside the church. After the wedding, as they admired the photographs of the happy bride and groom, the bride with her family, the groom with his family, and all their friends and relations, they noticed one common backdrop to all the photographs. It was the sermon of Easter week when they got married on a big notice board outside the church captured in the photographs. Forgive them, Lord, they know not what they do. <laughs> Take it that applause came from people who knew what they were doing <laughs> and still do. Um, but uh, if you do have a partner with a different language, please do know this. Keep both languages and cultures alive in the family home. Celebrate your legacies. Embrace your cultures. And then you will enrich and be enriched. And I'd like to welcome in their own languages the families and friends who've traveled to Ireland to be with their sons and daughters from France, Germany, Poland and Nigeria. Euh, pour les étudiants français, c'est euh, un vrai plaisir de vous donner mes félicitations aux étudiants français. Il y a quelqu'un quelqu qui ont accompli l'œuvre difficile de commencer leur diplôme en français et le finir en anglais ici à Dublin. Deutschen Studenten. Wir begrüßen alle unsere deutschen Studenten und ihre Familie, die gekommen sind und gemeinsam mit ihnen zu fahren. Polish students, Witamy Ciebie, Fajforogeni Rugino, Fajforogino i Priaccio. Student de Nadja, for our Nigerian students. Hafa. <laughs> Adi, welcome now, my people, to Nadia. <laughs> Nadi Picken, <laughs> the low program, how far? The media program, how far? How we saw? Where did Picken? No Wahala. Well, thank you for trying to understand my pigeon. <laughs> and it's, it, it's almost a new, a new language in Nigeria, and really to quite a sophisticated level. I've no doubt that someday we will see a Nigerian author doing as well as our Irish authors, who in fact have greatly improved the English language to the extent that they've received Nobel Prizes for their efforts. No doubt we'll look forward to some Nigerian author in pigeon English, in fact. 
producing some wonderful manuscript. August Fortirov, Karda, August Guilta, and McLean Aranaka. Our law faculty students enter an ever changing legal sector with new legislation changing the law in areas such as employment, tenancy rights, intellectual property rights, and family law, to name but a few. The ongoing development of the Irish legal sector is also evidenced by the government initiative to make Ireland a global hub for legal services post-Brexit. Oh, oh dear, I didn't mention that word. <laughs> um, by positively exploiting the competitive advantages of our globally renowned courts and legal systems in the provision of EU and other international legal services in, I say it again, a post-Brexit setting. Lawyers, of course, will relish change which brings new statutes, a new case law, a new charge about ours, <laughs> uh, to be interpreted and advised upon. The skills which our graduates develop during their studies have well prepared them for the challenges they may face. We in Griffith College are, are very proud to have been chosen by the Irish Institute of Legal Executives as partners in developing the diploma of, in legal studies and practice. I'd like to welcome Frank and Evelyn Crummy, Judy Butler and Mary O'Dwyer from ILEX who are here today. Uh, our media learners consistently excel in receiving nominations and awards. This year, in the National Student Media Award, our students won in the categories of Best Photographer and Small Best College Publication of the Year. And I should mention that I think this is a, a first in this country, that last year our students won the five nominations uh, for Best Photographer Year uh, guaranteed that the SME Media Best Photographer of the Year was going to be a Griffith College student. That has happened twice now, and it is the only organization, the only educational institution to which that has happened. So congratulations to our photography department. They're clearly doing something else. Right. <laughs> and apart from Best Photographer, uh, the uh, our students have won Best Small Publication of the Year. Um, and students, moreover, Griffith students have won the S Media Photographer Year in six of the last eight years. Six of the last eight years since 2012. Um, uh, Griffith Media graduates are working uh, uh, across the world. Our graduates are content managers in Frankfurt and Dublin, learning specialists at Google, post-production coordinators at Spotify in New York, marketing experts at Accenture, Journalists, researchers, producers and editors at RTE, Virgin Media, News Talk, The Irish Times, Sun, Star, Mail, and Independent News and Media. We really delight in their success. The faculty has Norwegian students or Norwegian graduates working at LinkedIn and Google in Dublin. Irish graduates working as events managers in Western Australia. We've had Chinese and Brazilian students provide translation services to RTE's Primetime Investigates program. And even one graduate is a vice president of communications for Credit Suisse. On the European political stage, the BA in Journalism and Visual Media graduate, uh, um, and also 2014 Rosa of Tralee winner, uh, and, and recipient of the Griffith College Professional Excellence Award, Maria Walsh, was elected MEP for Ireland, Midlands Northwest, this year. Uh, having met Maria during uh, the course of that ceremony, I have to say, I really formed the view of somebody, a really lovely person with the feet very much on the ground. And great to see that view shared by so many of the electorate uh, uh, and uh, uh, in, as evidenced by her success as election of MEP. Um, this is literally a world of opportunity, if you're ready for the challenge. The carving of careers in the arts takes tenacity, commitment, and imagination. The graduates of the Leinster School in drama and music education programs are very aware of this. They've taken their talents all over this country and further afield, using all their creativity to nurture the talents and potential of future generations. Our collaboration with Pulse College has also yielded much local and global success. The Irish music industry contributes over 470 million to the economy and supports more than 11,510 jobs in Ireland. Our Pulse music students are very much at the leading edge of the music industry, and their readiness as practitioners is evident by their dissertations by practice, and also by their professional client project models. The animation industry in Ireland is worth over 100 million to the Irish economy, and its tentacles stretch far and wide, 
or an anima animation graduates have already found work in Singapore and Los Angeles. Ireland's capacity to cope through education with rapid change has led to great successes for Ireland and great opportunities for you. We have in Ireland all of the top 10 global technology companies, 18 of the world's 25 top med tech companies, 18 of the 20 top pharma companies. 7.5% of Ireland's workforce is in high technology sectors, outstripping the EU average of 4% and putting Germany into second place. Our non-degree, our non-EU, excuse me, bachelor's degree graduates can work in Ireland for one year and master's graduates for two years. They join a non-national workforce, which is double the EU average. Griffith College is delighted to be involved in exciting initiatives whereby students work while learning. It started with Springboard, where the college repeatedly wins tenders and which helped reduce unemployment from 15% to 5.4% in five years. They followed apprenticeships, Griffith being awarded national apprenticeships for health carers and bar managers. I have to say I'm particularly excited at the prospect of health, a health care apprenticeship operating out of Griffith. I believe that, that what that will do is will lift the standard of education and the standard of knowledge uh, of people who are in the front line in the provision of healthcare, the healthcare systems. Uh, I believe that will help them to know, understand, and appreciate the symptoms they see on a first-hand basis every day and to have the language to actually uh, convey these to the nurses and doctors they serve. Uh, under a similar initiative, in its second year, school leavers work by day in the central bank and pursue under scholarship a Griffith Business Studies degree by night. Typically, 500 schoolgoers apply for eight of these scholarships annually. Now that you're part of the Griffith alumni, don't hesitate to set your sights on the pinnacle of your profession. Your standards are set by your fellow alumni, who last year took 19 prizes, and so far this year have taken 25 prizes across all accounting body examinations. These include a first place and second place in the world in specific ACCA papers, and four other placings in the top 15, from among 503,000 students in 179 countries. Let's dwell on that for a minute. That is first in the world among half a million students. That is truly an incredible achievement. They've also obtained 11 first places in CPA examination in 2018 and 13 first places in 2019. And they also included nine past presidents of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in Ireland. Also commendable are the previous graduates in law who took 53 prizes in the Law Society entrance examinations in recent years. But we too in Griffith College have to make a difference. Key to the value of your award today will be our national degrees becoming Griffith College degrees under the delegated authority to make our own awards, which we expect to receive within the near future. There should follow university status, now open to institutes of technology through amalgamation. Given our size, this should be open to us. We too have to have faith. Hopefully, you will share that faith in us. As you glimpse the world from your current mountain peak, let me leave you with the challenge of sustainability expressed in these words. Remind us, Lord, how short the span of life. Our pleasures, like ourselves, are sure to die, and they will not beget our children's strife if we just cherish water, earth, and sky. From this reference, you'll gather that I'm about to conclude. With great relief, I notice. <laughs> to all graduates, may I express the hope that over your period with us, Griffith College will have found a place in your hearts as you have in ours. I want you to know you're always welcome on campus, socially, educationally, or just to show off the new BMW. <laughs> may I conclude by congratulating you again on your success and by wishing that you may harness the knowledge and experience you have acquired in Griffith College to achieve what you richly deserve, a successful and fulfilling career. Thank you.
President, it is the wish of the College to confer a Distinguished Fellowship Award. I call upon Anya McManus, Head of the College's Graduate Business School, to present Josephine Feehilly for the Griffith College Distinguished Fellowship Award. President, I'm delighted to present our esteemed guest, Ms. Josephine Feely, who was, has been honoured by accepting the 2019 Griffith College Distinguished Fellowship Award. We are honoured to present this award to Josephine in recognition of her distinguished career at the top levels of public service in Ireland and a representation of Ireland on the international stage. I would also like to welcome some of Josephine's family who are here to celebrate today, her husband Paddy, her sister Bernie, nieces and nephews, Liam, Maria, Sharon, Elaine, and I think baby Andy, somewhere along the way. There has been a debate for years about what makes a leader. This debate has results in two schools of thought. One school proposes that leaders are made from a select few unique individuals, born with a rare set of leadership abilities. Leaders are born. The other school of thought proposes that leaders are made, that we learn, grow, and develop into leaders. Leaders are made. Let me take the second school of thought and explain to you how I believe Josephine should take today as a celebration and recognition of her hard work in learning, growing, and developing as a leader. Josephine grew up in a rural village called Ballybrown, County Limerick. After attending the local primary school, Josephine went on to the Presentation College Limerick, where she began to show early signs of influence and leadership. Josephine's class were a particular hard-working, diligent group. As Mary Guerin, her former Latin teacher, recalls, they were actually the first class of the presentation school to all go to school and then further themselves into college. This was a huge step for young girls in third level education at the time. During her early years in secondary school, Josephine joined the school's debating team. Tony Costello, another former teacher of Josephine's, recalls this class for their strong debating skills. Josephine's sister Mary recalls an evening of great pride for both Josephine and her family. She recalls a large trophy, and when speaking to Mary, she did record and emphasize this was a very large trophy, and how Josephine arrived home one evening after winning a debating competition, and how the trophy took pride of place for some time after that in the family home. She also spoke about how, at a very young age, you were well able, Josephine, to ca and capable of putting your point across in a very concise and informed manner. Debating might be seen as a pillar of experience which stands to Josephine today, given public speaking is part of your daily routine. As a general rule, people do not listen attentively. This is why the first 30 to 60 seconds are the most critical to the success of any public speaking encounter. Audiences make decisions about you and what you are saying within that time frame. It is important we realize this and choose our words wisely. From having done my research on Josephine and her accolades to date, it is clear that Josephine has mastered the form of conversation and that the attempts to communicate a message in an orderly and structured manner within the required time frame, and maybe I have not. Josephine is a graduate of the National College of Ireland, Trinity College Dublin also. She has decades of experience in public service, leadership, governance and change management. To give you a brief synopsis of her career in public service, she served in a number of positions in the Department of Social Welfare and the Pensions Board before joining the offices of the Revenue Commissioners in 1993 at Assistant Secretary level with responsibility for human resources and corporate management. Josephine then went on to serve as Accountant General of Revenue. In 1998, 1998, she was appointed as one of the three Revenue Commissioners with executive responsibility for policy and legislation, tax collection, strategy and organisation development, the Large Cases Division and the Customs Service. In 2008, she became the first woman to be appointed as Chair of the Revenue Commissioners. Her term of office as Chair of the Revenue ran until early 2015 during some of the most difficult and challenging financial years ever faced by this country. 
During these tough years of austerity and fiscal consolidation, Josephine led revenue in developing into one of the leading tax administrations in the world. Irish taxation administration has consistently been highly ranked in the PwC World Bank International Benchmarking Report and it is viewed internationally as being extremely transparent and efficient. During 2011, Josephine was elected as chair of the World Customs Organization, which is one of the world's largest intergovernmental trade organizations with now 183 member states. At that time, the then Minister for Finance, Michael Noonan, said that her election as chair was an honor for Ireland. Josephine was proposed for this position by her European colleagues, and her success is a reflection of the regard in which the Revenues Customs Service and Josephine Feely are held in the international customs community. In November 2012, Josephine was elected to chair the OECD Forum for Tax Administration. She was the first individual to simultaneously chair both organisation and filled the roles with typical efficiency at a time when key international bodies, including G20, OECD and the EU were paying particular attention to global tax and trade. Towards the end of her term as the Chair of the Revenue Commissioners, Josephine oversaw the role out of the local property tax, the simplicity of which is seen as a key factor in its successful implementation. Following her distinguished career with revenue, Josephine became the first chair of the newly formed Policing Authority, the establishment of which is one of the most far-reaching reforms of Angarda Siakona since the foundation of the state. On being invited to take up the post of chair of the newly formed Police Authority in 2014, the then Minister of Justice and Equality, Minister Fitzgerald, stated, Josephine Feely is a woman of unimpeachable integrity and unquestioned ability. She will bring a wealth of experience and competencies to her new independent role, leading the public oversight of policing in Ireland. In this role, she has never been afraid to speak truth to power, and her track record of exemplary public service and ethos of truth speaking has brought public accountability and increased public trust in the administration of policing services in Ireland. Before I conclude, I would like to leave our graduands with some food for thought. You cannot be what you cannot see. To me and to all in this auditorium here today, Josephine clearly serves as a role model. To see what a life dedicated to public service and to the good of our country looks like and to see such a role model for all our graduates to emulate. President, in recognition of her distinguished career at the top levels of public service in Ireland and her representation of Ireland on the international stage, I now present to you Miss Josephine Feely for the College's 2019 Distinguished Fellowship Award. Anish, while in Foyle to Coroy, could he encourage you than Okaid in the run for a colleague to North Junta, Augusta or North Junta, or Vic Lane and Colosta? I now welcome you to the part of our proceedings at which national and international awards will be conferred on students of the college, and I declare open this awards ceremony. Here, Marin Tullov, Jim Integrity, Ochtaron, Colosta, Ugrafa, colleague to North Junta, Augusta, or North Junta, Vrunna, or the Fowlamori, at Todor Herbert, Egan Colosta. I call upon Professor Dean Integrity, President of Griffith College, to confer awards on the learners of this college presented by the college for that purpose. Now, can I just explain to you briefly the significance of this moment? Uh, you will notice that, in fact, in my earlier discourse, I refer to you all as graduands, the Latin gerund, those in course of graduation. From this moment onwards, or from this actually conferring onwards, we will refer to you as graduates. 
So this is the actual act that confers on you the status, the degree status for which you've worked so hard. Hakan Kalorshi Igrifa, Agus Korla Diavi Kalikta Agus Kalikti Eran, Brunam Kalikti Erfjalimori, and Kalorshta, Avin Kaidanamach, Ilekna Kalikti, Agus Irum Gagurthu, Nefjalimori, Fim of Royd, Hun Gurfedalam, a quid par a Herbert Doiv, go for the moon. And for, for the benefit of those who do not have Irish as a mother tongue, let me state this also in English. On behalf of Griffith College and Quality and Qualifications Ireland, I hereby confer the awards on the learners of the college who have achieved the standards determined for those awards, and I ask that those learners be presented to me so that I may formally present them with their parchments. Irmanish er Sinead Murphy, Stiorahor Clore, Irahoria Herbert. I call upon Sinead Murphy, Programme Director, to present the candidates in respect of the faculty's photography programmes. President, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and the class of 2019. Congratulations to our Certificate in Photography and our BA in Photographic Media graduates. Our Certificate class are a group full of personality, a kind, funny, supportive, and very talented group. And you might ask, what's that got to do with photography? Well, nothing and everything, because it made for a wonderful educational experience um, and those attributes will serve you well. Some of our um, certificate students made the, made the, may I say, brilliant decision to continue their studies on the degree with us, and we look forward eagerly to seeing your work, the work that you produce with us in the next two years. Our BA in Photographic Media class, you've all completed a marathon, a creative marathon, not just any degree. The industry knows that when you to complete your degree in photography here with us in Griffith, you have worked hard and you are employable. You're ready to work or indeed further your studies. You have worked together, you've made friends, and you've made a network for life, and you can work on your own initiative. I'm thrilled that you're leaving Griffith with more in your back pockets than grades alone. Cherish your friendships, cherish the friendships that you made. Your peers are your surrounding board and your critical best friends for the future. Keep them close. You're also armed with wonderful work, immortalized on your fantastic websites and beautifully produced books and prints. Don't keep them under your bed. Show the world your worth. These attributes will make you better photographers, better at dealing with your clients and more memorable people to work with. Your different personalities, your world and aesthetic views shone through when we view the mixed genres of final project work at our graduate show in this very room back in June. You engaged us. You made us think and question all manner of things, including the homeless crisis in Ireland, simple yet very striking images, Irish folklore. These images were shot submerged in water. You documented the landscape around the so-called Irish border. You made contemporary military portraits, colourful fashion pieces, a dystopian view of Dublin, a twist on the, on the zodiac signs, recycled items made into fashion pieces, abandoned Ireland, documenting childhood and more besides. Just some examples then. James Campbell found the travel bug while studying and he now boasts 18 18, over 18,000, nearly 19,000 followers on, Twitter, on Instagram. His graduate work introduced the viewers um, to the indigenous Sami people in Sweden. The class of 2019 broke all house records for selling the most amount of work at our graduate show. The diversity of the work on show proved that there was something for everybody to enjoy. Your strong work ethic on, 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 the, past on the graduate show that we've just seen Please know that you've already inspired our current third years, some of whom have referenced your graduate work in their very recent proposal presentation to us for this year. Here's just a few examples of some of the success. 
Dylan Termashizen's graduate work was a series of Irish surf photography. It was published this year in a renowned surf magazine, Carve 25, which was a dream come true for Dylan. Since that first black and white film that he shot in first year, um, his surf photography has been recognised in the National Student Media Awards twice. Chris Corner won this Media Photographer of the, of the Year in his second year on the programme for his memorable documentary portraits of people leaving either side of the Peace Wall in Belfast. You might see his work on the wall in our D block in, in the main building. Irina Backland represented Griffith as the Inspirational Arts Award finalist for her graduate series, C Common or Garden, which last month she won outright, beating off tough competition from her peers in alternative photography programs around Ireland. Irina's work has since been on display in the Library Project in Temple Bar for the last month. In the eight years of the Inspirational um, Arts Award, which has been open to all photography degree programs, Griffith graduates have won it four times. On behalf of myself and the rest of our photography department team, we congratulate you all and wish you every success now and in the future. Dream big, work hard, and surround yourself with good people. Keep in touch, because we do love a success story. And as I always say, because it's true, you are a part of our Griffith photography family now. It doesn't end here. The support and the network is always here for you. President. I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed programs in the journalism and media faculty and who are worthy of the QQI awards and I request you present their parchment to them. First off is the certificate in photography. Charmaine Cross. Sorka Flattery. And Sarah MacDonald. <laughs> and now for the BA in Photographic Media, James Campbell. <laughs> Albie Collins. Christopher Corner. <laughs> Carol Cummins. <laughs> David Hogarty. Good name. Prasida Liam Mocken. <laughs> Sean Moore. <laughs> Jan Ordaz. <laughs> Michelle Perdue. Luisa Sanchez. <laughs> David Uzel. <laughs> and Miriam Ward. Irmanish er on Dr. Neil Meehan, Stuarhor Dive, Irohori a Herbert. I call upon Dr. Neil Meehan, Head of the Faculty of Journalism and Media Communications, to present candidates in respect of the faculty's journalism and visual media degree programs. Graduates leaving Griffith College today with the award of BA in Journalism or BA in Journalism and Visual Media are fully equipped to participate in and to shape the information environment. 
That goes for all of the faculty's graduates in film and in photography and our journalism, TV, radio, PR, master's graduates. Your family and friends are also very welcome here today, including Brie Catterall's grandparents who flew all the way from Australia to be here. The capacity of individuals to play a significant role in the story of Ireland is exemplified this week by the sad death of RT broadcaster Gay Byrne. His presentation and interrogation of important stories on radio and on television in the 1960s, 70s and 80s helped to move society consideration of to consideration of issues particularly concerning sexual freedoms and morality and the treatment of women which previously had been ignored or had been regarded as taboo. Gayburn facilitated making them part of the popular conversation, which in turn became a force for change. He did so through the new medium of television in the 1960s. He did so through uh, uh, after the government set up the semi-state radio televisieren. This innovation progressively allowed RTE employees a degree of freedom and autonomy that permitted the development of truly independent broadcasting in which Gayburn and others flourished. The 1960s were a period in which society generally, not merely in, merely in Ireland, was in flux. It was a period of the youth revolt, of the women's movement, of the gay movement, of civil rights movements in the USA and in Ireland, of worldwide opposition to the Vietnam War, that combined with changes in popular culture affecting music, clothes and appearance. Television, radio and the newspapers reflected these seismic changes. Most accounts recognize the significant role played by the Late Late Show presented by Gay Byrne, in particular its use of audience participation that made it a weekly anticipated entertainment and democratic forum. The information environment today is undergoing even more profound change. The world media faculty graduates are now entering. As the main headline in the Irish Times today indicates, the public service model of broadcasting is threatened by changes in media technology. They affect license fee funding and therefore also the capacity, capacity to provide the public with discussion and images based on rules of objectivity and fairness. That is the essence of the public service model of broadcasting, a model that should be defended, not least as it provides a base of employment that sustains the wider media production environment. The advent of unregulated online provision of information on a world scale has also facilitated micro-targeting of audiences that is said to have affected election and referendum outcomes in, amongst other countries, Nigeria, the USA and Britain. An international committee on the effects of fake news and disinformation is meeting uh, today in Dublin as part of a wider process of investigation. In the most powerful country on the planet, the USA, two-thirds of the population receive news via Facebook and Google. The head of Facebook thinks that attempts to restrict or regulate patently false political advertising on his platform are a violation of rights of free speech. Ex exercising his right not to speak, Mark Zuckerberg has turned down an invitation to appear in Dublin today. Graduates entering this challenging world of opportunity of, of uncertainty and of change are entering, entering a profession, not merely a job. This professional aspect of information provision should be retained at the core of what you do. Your job is to seek out and to present verified information, irrespective of where you find it or of who commissions the work from you. In defending the integrity of information provision, you are defending and enhancing the, the career prospects of media professionals. What you do is important. You are part of the tradition that produced Gay Byrne and those who are part of his various production teams. On your broad shoulders, with all the skills you have honed and developed with us here in the faculty, lies the future. On the basis of the work so far, we have every confidence you can meet the challenges you will face. You should enter the world of work with confidence. We know this because our media learners consistently excel in receiving nominations and awards at the Student Media Awards. The President mentioned earlier in his address the successful students this year. He also spoke of the many areas of media production, of broadcasting and of journalism where our graduates excel. 
In the world of politics, in addition to Maria Walsh in the European Parliament, two members of Dáil Éireann are Griffith graduates, Shane Castles and Helen McEntee, who also is Minister for European Affairs, a very important position today in the context of Brexit. And of course, Rose Ugala was elected Communications Officer of Griffith College Student Union. There is literally, literally a world of opportunity, one for which I repeat we know, and more importantly, you know you are ready. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed programs in journalism and, media, and the media faculty who are worthy of QQI awards and I request you present their parchments to them. BA in journalism, Rona Lachlan. Fola O'Connell Grenell. Siti Aizati Binti Syed Sultan. Adam Tracy Temeny. Uh, BA in Journalism and Visual Media, Ugne Askovite, <laughs> Ottavia Caminita, <laughs> Brie Catterall. Gillian Coleman. <laughs> Peter Komiski. Aaron Dodd. Roisin Duggan. Alisa Gertzwolf. <laughs> Claire Hayes. Cleana <laughs> Kelly. Martin Loisser. Jack Lynch. Nils Nutch. Uh, Louise Nygaard. Ryan Kieran O'Callaghan. <laughs> Rachel Katrina O'Loughlin. <laughs> Rafaela Elizabeth Lucas Powells. Stephen Rafferty. <laughs> Jonathan Randall. Rose Ugala. Sikh Admed Zibran Chauvon. Er, Tanya Doyle, Surahor Clore, Irahori er, Herbert. I call upon Tanya Doyle, Programme Director, to present the candidates in respect of the BA in Film and TV Production Programme.
President, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I enthusiastically extend my congratulations to the learners on the BAM film and TV production. Today is your day. You deserve it. Enjoy it. We need stories to understand the world and ourselves. And as part of this challenging program, the lear the, these learners engaged with a wide range of both academic and practical disciplines, from screenwriting, concept development and direction, through to production, post-production, VFX, for both film and live studio TV production. We encouraged our learners to experiment, to be creative, to be curious, and to find their creative voices. And we strive to give them the courage and skills to express these newly roused voices. And evidence of this can be seen in the broad range of topics covered and the different forms explored in the graduation films produced this year. Screen content production is one of the fastest growing industries globally. And the Irish landscape has never before been so dynamic. The BA in film and TV production have fostered relationship with industry and our students have availed of every opportunity afforded to them to work with industry while studying at Griffith College. Having completed this programme, some of our learners have already started forging their own paths in industry. For example, Mark Splanan has worked as an assistant editor on one of Ireland's most established post-production houses, um, Outer Limits. Mark worked on various projects, including Lenny Abramson's Normal People. Chloe Nolan, who during her time at Griffith College, showed her flair for production. Um, Chloe has gone on to work as a production assistant in numerous TV commercials. Um, and she's also earned her first professional screen credit as a production assistant on Ruth Meehan's upcoming feature film, Dead Happy. Avril Burke worked as, as an assistant editor on a feature film called The Eighth with Cowtown Pictures and Griffith College lecturer John Wallace. Avril also um, is currently working as an uh, executive assistant with Screen Ireland, formerly the Irish Film Board. Other members of the class are pursuing further study and some have ventured out on their own as freelancers and producers. And we congratulate them all. Okay. It is with great pride that I wish this fantastic group of people every success in the future. And finally, I just would like to remind you that film and TV production is about collaboration. Collaboration is about achieving, producing, and creating work together. Believe in yourselves. Continue to support each other and rely on the network that you've developed during your time here in Griffith College. This is a very exciting time to be entering the film, TV, and screen media industries. President, I present to you the following candidates who have completed the BA in film and TV production and who are worthy of the QQI award, and I ask you to present them their parchments. Avril Burke. <laughs> Ashling, Ashling King Swords. <laughs> Heather Lucknan. <laughs> Kira Maguire. Kevin Nyland. Chloe Nolan. Matthew Ryan. Mark Splanan. Veronica Magdalena Urban. John Worrell. Irmanish er Barry Finnegan, Sturahor Clore, Irahori Irkema, a Herbert. I call upon Barry Finnegan, Programme Director, to present candidates in respect of the Faculty of Journalism and Media Communications postgraduate and master's programmes.
President, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, good afternoon. Graduates, when I see you sitting out here today, I'm reminded of the essays you wrote, the discussions we had, the news, the news reports and feature articles you researched and wrote, and that massive dissertation which you finished. And I'm reminded of our faculty's mission statement, which goes like this. The Faculty of Journalism and Media Communications believe in the essential, essential role that an independent, critical and reflective media has in underpinning democracy in modern society. We want to produce graduates who have the key skills and capabilities to succeed professionally in a rapidly changing creative and communicative sector, while demonstrating the academic and personal depth needed to also challenge and shape society for the betterment of all. Having lectured and tutored you and marked your work over the past one to two years, I know that we have achieved our mission. There's never been a more exciting time to enter the news and media communications industries. New job descriptions abound. Every company, every NGO, every news and content outlet needs qualified communications workers. And while, yes, the sales of physical newspapers are down, we must remember that subscriptions to online news outlets are up every single one of recent years. Indeed, across the big water in America, donations to not-for-profit and investigative journalism websites are up over 2,000% since that reality TV star became president. <laughs> <coughs> Had to get it in. <laughs> and other positive trends are bound. Over here in Europe, in comparison um, to people over 50, younger Europeans are four times better at uh, being able to spot the difference between a news report and an opinion piece, which is essential. Indeed, Preparing the speech today, I was reminded of my own uh, undergraduate uh, uh, ceremony, which was many, many, many years ago. We even had a different currency. <laughs> and I was thinking, it was perfectly normal for even young people to buy three or four or five newspapers a week. And so, with that in mind, I can't pass up this opportunity to remind everyone here today for who consumes news on the internet and who has a love of democracy that we should all be spending at least, at least 50 to 100 euro a year for our online, new, online news subscriptions so that we can secure the quality news services which our democracy requires and which we deserve. But back to you graduates. Now, I want you to remember that the graduates of your faculty punch way, way above their weight in terms of the size of our, our, our faculty. And so please make use of the network of graduates and stay in touch with us in the faculty. I am full of confidence for your future in the ever-expanding and changing uh, er arena of the media industries and you should be too. On behalf of myself and the rest of the faculty, congratulations. President. I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed their programs and who are worthy of the awards of Postgraduate Diploma in Arts and Journalism and Media Communications, Masters of Arts in Journalism and Media Communications, Master of Arts in Journalism and Public Relations, Postgraduate Diploma in Arts and Television and Radio Journalism, and Master of Arts in Television and Radio Journalism, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Camila Moret. Ayomide Akinsholo. <laughs> Natanti Alur. <laughs> Ola Lakin Ayani. <laughs> Kim Carroll. James Caulfield. <laughs> Kim Dignan. <laughs> Lavender Equiramandu. <laughs> Kieran Feely. Katharina Laumann. <laughs> 
Faith Monday. <laughs> Helen Moses. <laughs> Blossom Abudu. Esther Alaware. <laughs> Rasak Alosije. <laughs> Diane Burke. <laughs> Haley Doherty. Ayodele Flora Uncho. <laughs> Barnett Gomez. <laughs> Andraina Escalante. Abigail Malone. <laughs> Peter Obi. <laughs> Elaine O'Neill. <laughs> Rashim Rashim. Fatima Saheed. <laughs> Marta Spiga. <laughs> Aylan Yilmaz. Luana Matos. <laughs> Brian Byrne. <laughs> Sophie Collins. Sive Maguire. <laughs> and Debbie Regard. Irmanish <laughs> Er Karen Sutton, Stuarhor Doiva, Irhori Herbert. I call upon Karen Sutton head of the law faculty, to present candidates in respect of the law faculty's diploma in legal studies and practice. Hello. Hello. President, distinguished guests, colleagues, graduates, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to announce this year's graduates from the Faculty of Law, Diploma in Legal Studies and Practice. The Diploma in Legal Studies and class, Practice class comprise a group of students from a diverse range of ages, backgrounds and nationalities. But what these learners have in common is their strong work ethic, dedication to their studies and a desire to develop not only their legal knowledge but their own personal development also. Students complete the diploma to enhance their existing careers, to start new careers within the legal sector 
or as a stepping stone to our LLB degree, the route taken by many of today's graduates. Others wish to dip their toe in education or simply have an interest in law. All achieved a remarkable feat. But no matter what the reason learners join the diploma, they hopefully leave not only with a qualification, but with new friends, a realization of their own ability, a sense of pride in their achievement, and a desire to continue on the path that they have now forged. I speak from experience when I say that each of our diploma students pursue their studies with great tenacity and diligence. Indeed, over the past number of years, I've had the opportunity to work with all of the law graduates before us today, and I've thoroughly enjoyed every moment. A number of today's graduates have traveled to Philadelphia and worked as judicial interns in the Court of Common Pleas. A much sought after opportunity and one which our learners showed maturity, commitment, legal acumen and focus in completing. Indeed, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our graduates who represent the college at international competitions, mooting and debating competitions, internships and start ed. Your preparedness and positive attitude ensured that the reputation of Griffith College and the Faculty of Law was in very safe hands. Among our graduates, we have Siobhan Clabby and Amy Lee, finalists in the Irish Law Awards 2019 Law Student of the Year category, an amazing achievement, and one Siobhan, Amy, and their families should be very proud of. We in the law faculty certainly are. As is evident from the above, Beyond the academic dimension of their studies, learners are given real world and practical experience, which further enriches and augments their understanding of the concepts that they learn in the classroom. In light of this, a number of learners cho chose to continue their studies with the Faculty of Law. CLS and DLSP students continued to the LLB Law degree, and some went on to the LLM Master's Qualification. We are delighted that you chose to stay with the Faculty and trusted us with your future. I cannot finish here today without acknowledging all those who committed wholeheartedly to a course of study while working full-time or part-time, caring for children or loved ones, or indeed all of the above. This is a remarkable achievement in itself. We are proud of you all, I am proud of you all, and honoured that you chose the Faculty of Law at Griffith College. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed and who are worthy of the Diploma in Legal Studies and Practice, and I request you to present their parchments to them. From the Diploma in Legal Studies and Practice, Karen Boyd. <laughs> Susan Callan. <laughs> Michael Donnelly. Rachel Downs. Claire Foley. Sarah Hannigan. Alan Healy. Loretta Carney. Anne-Marie Kelly. Alison McKenna. Kamal Tanaik. Martina Rezoakwicz. Patrick Reardon. And Abdul Weeder. Thank you.
Irmanish er John Erdley, Stuart Hor Clor, Irhori Kama, O'Dyvans Leah Herbert. I call upon John Erdley, Programme Director, to present the degree candidates in respect of the law faculties LLB in law. President, graduates, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests, uh, I firstly wish to congratulate all our graduates on the LLB Honours Programme across the full-time, part-time, and blended learning programmes. It is important to remember that your graduation recognises not just the successful completion of the programme, but also the journey you have taken to reach this point and those with whom you have shared it. I am sometimes asked by learners whether it is important to come to graduation, and my answer to them is always an emphatic yes. By coming together for graduation, we recognize that this achievement is not a solitary experience for a solitary purpose, but a collective experience for a collective purpose. For law is nothing if not the respectful and fair regulation of collective human affairs. Over 2,000 years ago, one of the greatest minds the world has ever known, Aristotle, confirmed this when he pronounced, the law is reason, free from passion. By this he meant that justice is established not by the personal whims of particular individuals, but by the collective engagement of a society as a whole. Therefore, at a time when the respectful exchange of ideas and values are under strain in many societies and reflected in many of the speeches you will have heard here today, the fundamental intellectual qualities instilled in your legal education, such as the ability to recognize the other side of an argument, are needed now more than ever. The tragedy is that we often miss these qualities when they are gone. As a class, therefore, I wish to commend you all on rising to the challenge of this great legal tradition. Particular examples are your participation in mooting and debating, including the renowned Jessup competition, competing with the King's Inns and the Law Society, and your successful admission to the John Pictet competition, the so-called World Championship for International Human, uh, Humanitarian Law. I therefore know the determination, the hopes, and the commitment each one of you in different ways has brought to your studies and to your place at the graduation here today. And I have no doubt that as you go out into this world, you have bright futures ahead. In that, you have now become part of a long and honourable tradition in which you are all very well placed to fulfil your true potential. And in that spirit, I wish you well and the very best of success in all your future endeavours. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed the LLB Honours in Irish Law Programme and who are worthy of the QQI Award, and I request you present uh, their parchments to them. Mohammed Abdel Wahab. <laughs> Precious Abebe. <laughs> Miriam Amoa. Hubert Augustin. <laughs> Lusanda Angelique Boy. <laughs> Sarah Brennan. <laughs> Siobhan Clabby. Abraham Da Silva. Frank J. Daly. Sarah Daoud. Sarah Donahue. Yeah. 
Geraldine Doyle. James Ross Doyle. Emma Farrell. Lisa Fitzsimons. Miriam Freeman. Adam Gibson. Retiet Hagai. Karen Hanlon. Christopher Kavanagh Byrne. Marguerite Kyo. Avril Kelly. Nikita Kirby. Jürgen Klingen. Andre Koryoktastet. Roxana Lambino. Isabel Law. Linda Learmouth. Amy Lee. Abigail Livingston. Joshua Lynch. Rachel McCarran. Idal McHugh. Owen Muldoon. Serena Catherine Murphy. Wai Yang Ng. Yi Chuang Ning. Kiron O'Connell. Omema Uche. Chiedo Onono. Milda Orentete. Ryan Reddy. Patricia Shocknessy. Julia Skoch. (laughs) 
Sarah Swan. Constance Elizabeth Walsh. Victoria White. Sarah Hayes. Irmanish er and Doctor Sarah Brian O'Sullivan, Stuarhor Clore, Irahori Irkeim O'Dovent Leah Herbert. I call upon Dr. Sarah Brian O'Sullivan, Programme Director, to present the candidates in respect of the Law Faculty's postgraduate and master's programmes. Good afternoon, President, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and graduates. I am delighted to say a few words about this year's graduates of the Masters in International Law, Masters in International Commercial Law, Masters in International Human Rights Law, and Postgraduate Diploma in International Human Rights Law. This year's graduates um, have really truly made the program international in nature, with learners coming from as far as Nigeria, Argentina, and Turkey not to mention those coming from all the way um, from Down and Galway. Each LLM graduate here has produced unique research in their chosen field of international law, which has been deemed to make a significant contribution to academic knowledge in that field. The research produced includes a variety of topics from sectarianism and state collusion with paramilitary groups in Northern Ireland, to a comparative analysis of projects undertaken in the development of a regulatory framework in the digital economy, to name but a few. To those who graduate with a postgraduate law degree today, I would like to heartily congratulate you all. Completing a master's or, or postgraduate diploma in law is no mean feat. It took hard work, dedication, commitment, and no doubt a few late nights. I hope you see your master's degree and postgraduate diplomas not only for the valuable qualifications that they are, but also of a sign of your ability and your commitment. I, along with the rest of the faculty, wish you all the very best in continuing your expertise in your areas of international law and we hope you enjoyed your time with us in the Law Faculty at Griffith College. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed postgraduate and master's programs in the Law Faculty, and who are worthy of the QQI awards, and I request you to present them with their parchment. LLM in International Human Rights Law, Shannon Harty. LLM in International Commercial Law, Jeff Anator. <laughs> Saeed Hussain. Cora McGovern. Olatulson Ojo. Marcus Rindfluck.
LLM in international law. Atari Amanda Anda. Barack Baidar. Ed Marvison dos Santos. Christopher Offadile. Selena Shaw. Puck Bao Chan. Connor Walsh. Irmanish er Owen McCauley, Stuart Hor Clore, the Pulse College, Irhori a Herbert. I call upon Owen McCauley, Program Director, to present candidates in respect of the college's animation programs. President, distinguished guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, and graduates of the class of 2019. Congratulations on this special day. And this is a special day for you and for your family and friends, many of whom have joined you here today. I would like to acknowledge the dedication and hard work of the graduates, the commitment to the program, and embracing the ethic of hard work and collaboration. As your lecturer, may I say, you should be justly proud of your academic achievements and the skills you now possess. They are a true measure of the effort put in during the past year. Some of you during your time as students have already entered the exciting world of television and media by contributing animation work to a new TV show set to air later this year. Others contributed insightful questions and remarks before leading industry experts at an IFTER event hosted earlier this year. It is therefore not surprising to hear that many from this class have already found work in industry both at home and abroad. And although this may be the end of your time with us, it is only the start of your exciting journey as you forge your own path to success. I would also like to extend my sincere thanks to my colleagues both here and in Pulse College, inspiring you as you move forward in your careers. So it is a great pride and admiration that I congratulate each and every one of you here today and wish you happiness and every success in the future. Present, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed the animation program in association with Pulse College and who are worthy of QQI awards and I request you present the parchments to them. Marina Campany. <laughs> Helena Clark. Andrews Cortez. Luke Fogarty. Veronica Griffith. Lena Joyce. Sean Matthews. Keith O'Toole. Paula Skiafon.
Agnes Seabergs. Irmanish Erken Houghton, Stewarthor Clor, Pulse College, Irahori Herbert. I call upon Ken Houghton, Program Director, to present candidates in respect of the college's audio and music production programs. Mr. President, distinguished guests, colleagues, proud family and friends of the graduates. My memory of this co cohort was their ability to mutually support and encourage each other throughout the three years of study at Pulse College, both on their practical work, but also academically. In the music production faculty, we encourage taking risks. Therefore, this year we saw a broad palette of dissertations by practice and climb projects, notably music compositions, scores for short films, design of Blumline microphones, concept albums, ambisonic recordings, and software plug-in design. So why should a student undertake a Bachelor of Arts in music production? Is it to serve the economy and industry, or is attending university an opportunity to share ideas and concept within the creative art of music production? Or is knowledge perhaps self-serving in its own end? The process of university, where we struggle to comprehend, where we share a curiosity for concepts and culture, that essence which makes us human. I suggest that if the first order vitality and benefits of study, research and exploration within the arts are in place, then the second order benefits filter into the economy and employment and commissions for music producers. So some advice for the class of 2019. Continue to what you, what you have been doing with us during your time with us, but now do, do so wholeheartedly. Endorse the creative process. Live your life within the creative art of music production. Mr. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in audio and music programs in association with Pulse College and who are worthy of QQI awards, and I would request you present their parchments to them. Certificate in Music Production for Games, Maria Butterley. Helen Lynch. <laughs> Kevin McGuire. <laughs> JB <Jamie> Megan. <laughs> Agatha Wenzel. Our Bachelor of Arts in Music Production, Sarah Brannigan. <laughs> Kean Farrell. <laughs> Natalie Gonzalez. Stephen Lyne. <laughs> Victoria McCormack. <laughs> Mandeep Singh. <laughs> Kean Sinnott. Anish Iram er Suzanne Binley, Sjorahor Klor, Nahirhori, Os Skull, Kyo, Lagastromirk, the Nakuiga Line, a Herbert. 
I call upon Suzanne Binlean, Programme Director, to present the candidates in respect of the College's Leinster School of Music and Drama programmes. President, distinguished guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, and graduates. The LSMD has been a source of excellence in music and drama for over 100 years. Its heart has been beating so long, it earned itself a mention in the writings of Samuel Beckett. In more recent years, its heart was transplanted here to Griffith College, and we have alumni teaching all over the country, sparking and nurturing a love of the arts in students young and old, turning hobbies into the future. In preparation for today, I thought about our students when they first arrived in Griffith College, full of anticipation, induction night last September. They arrived trying to look nonchalant, cool and calm. They were in fact the absolute opposite of cool and calm. Not quite the first day of school terror, but it was as though they knew that famous line from the L babies would become very familiar to the class. I want my mum. They came from all walks of life. These graduates made the decision to return to education, seeking change, a new direction, a new passion. You are inspirational. You pumped the blood around our faculty. You held down jobs, reared children, commuted up and down the country while coping with all the drama of your own personal lives. But you kept on devising, redirecting, directing, composing and recomposing. Now you know you've got a good learner cohort on your hands when a Fortnum and Mason hamper basket, once a gift from a client in a previous life, becomes a home to those old babies. Looking at you now, our small but mighty cohort, it's like looking at good friends. A small cohort leads to a family-like atmosphere in the faculty, and that's exactly what we had. We had a sister of a graduate, we had the wife of the programme director, which took a little bit of explaining to my husband, as in another lifetime in transition year, Orla and I played husband and wife. We had our only son, John, who allowed all the female trials and tribulations to wash over him, and of course, Claire, who provided us with that catchy jazz warm-up tune. And then the showcase, christened by the students Escarlata. For those of you with Spanish, you will know it means scarlet. They feared being left red-faced that night, and I know they will remember, but as ever, it was flawless. It flowed like the canal on a summer evening. They monologued, duologued, mimed, danced, and even cut Barbie's hair. I'm sure Laura is glad to see that Vanessa's not here with that brick. We were treated to poetry and musical interludes by Danielle, Sarah, and Simon. And then the part of the night they most looked forward to, the celebrations. The wine flowed, not as freely as the canal, thankfully, but many of us worried when we started to see double but thankfully it was Orla's identical twin. But seriously, you are to be commended for your commitment and dedication throughout your journey to today. No matter what was served up, you faced it head on. We must also acknowledge those who continued with their LSMD grades to associate and licentiate levels. These men and women keep the LSMD pulsing at local level. We warmly congratulate you on all your achievements. We are proud to call you ambassadors for the arts, the LSMD, and Griffith College. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the College's Leinster School of Music and Drama and who are worthy of the LSMD and QQI awards and I would request you present to them their parchments. Associate Diploma, Saoirse Mulvihill. Cert of Proficiency in Teaching Piano, Olivia Farrell. Sarah Malloy. Cleana Murphy. Kira Sheehan. Higher Diploma in Arts and Music Education, Jacintha Lou Little. <laughs> Certificate in Drama Performance, Claire Bell.
Certificate in Drama Education, Danielle White. Higher Diploma in Arts and Drama Education, Mairead Crowley. Laura Pomfret. Curran Shokriak Lambrunan and Novoctony. This concludes the presentation of the College's award candidates. Ta Anna Hosanishik and Glosh to Dushan of Runner or issue the Dari Lobar Fiausha Wintermach in a good lane. The College now has the pleasure of announcing a number of prizes which are awarded to graduates who've achieved excellence in their studies. I call upon Professor Dear Mategarty to present these prizes. And the first prizes are awarded in respect of the College's journalism and media communications programmes. And the first in respect of the Certificate in Photography. The best academic achievement on the Certificate in Photography programme is awarded to Charmaine Cross. The next prize is awarded in respect of the BA Honours in Journalism and Visual Media. The best academic achievement on the BA Honours in Journalism and Visual Media is awarded to Claire Hayes. This prize is awarded in respect to the Film and TV Production Programme. The best academic achievement on the BA in Film and TV Production is awarded to Avril Burke. The following prize is in respect of the MA in Journalism and Media Communications. The best academic achievement on the MA in Journalism and Media Communications is awarded to Katharina Laumann. The final prize in respect of journalism programmes is awarded in respect of the MA in Journalism and Public Relations. The best academic achievement on the MA in Journalism and Public Relations is awarded to Andriana America Gonzalez Escalante. The next prize is awarded in respect of the college's law programmes, and it's awarded in respect of the LLB Honours in Law. The best academic achievement on the LLB Honours in Law is awarded to Patricia Shocknessy. The next prize is awarded in respect of the college's music production and animation programmes and is awarded in respect of the BA Honours in Music Production. The best academic achievement on the BA Honours in Music Production is awarded to Sarah Brannigan.
And the final prize is awarded in respect of the college's Leinster School of Music and Drama programmes, and it's in respect of the Higher Diploma in Arts in Drama Education. The best academic achievement in the Higher Diploma in Arts in Drama Education is awarded to Mairead Crowley. Now that our graduates have all been conferred with their awards, I would like to invite Josephine Feely and holder of the Griffith College Distinguished mm. Fellowship Award to address the graduates. Oktaran, Augustin Kalashta, Asokt on Honor Moor, uh, Vrana on Kalashta Aramanyuv. President, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and the academic body, I'd like to begin by thanking you for your invitation to be here this afternoon. For the very kind words that Anya uh, read out about me, I'll come back to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is an enormous honor and privilege and I'm humbled to receive uh, the Distinguished Fellowship Award from Griffith College. Over the course of my career, I've had an opportunity to see up close how this organization has grown in terms of its footprint and in terms of the disciplines that it offers. I've also had an opportunity to meet and engage with many of your graduates in the course of my career. And indeed, I know a couple of them here today. Um, and it's been a privilege uh, to be associated with you and with them uh, this afternoon. Um, your researcher went to some interesting lengths to find out things about me, and you whispered to me that you hadn't managed to find any scandal. Well, I was really intrigued that you found my Latin teacher, because she obviously didn't tell you she threw me out. <laughs> and as a result, I spent my final term in secondary school running between various rooms to avoid being caught out of class, <laughs> because being a stubborn type, I refused to go back. Um, and my memory of those um, trophies is, yeah, I, I remember them vaguely, but I remember being angry, because the figurine on top was a man. And the presumption in the 1970s in Ireland was that if you were going to win a debating competition, you were going to be male. Um, and so that's my memory of the statue. So it's really interesting how people perceive things differently um, um, depending on where they're standing and depending on where they're sitting. And I suppose um, one of the things about education is it equips you to perceive things from different angles um, and the joy of, of a, a student body like you have here, uh, President, is that you have such multidisciplinary faculties that you can you can address matters from so many different angles. Um, and, and I think that's a really rich offering that you have uh, as, as an educational institution. In many ways, I was an accidental, and am an accidental public servant. Um, I went to work in the civil service because it was a job. And then it became a career. And along the way, I learned to understand and then become really passionate about the importance of public institutions and the importance of public confidence in those institutions. And when I say public institutions, I don't just mean the civil service. I mean all the institutions that shape uh, our democracy and our country and countries, including global institutions. So I include the political system, the judicial system, the educational system, and indeed uh, the public service. Public trust in those institutions matters. And it matters for economic reasons. It matters for social cohesion. It matters for the rule of law. And it matters, ultimately, for our democracy. In your opening remarks this afternoon, President, you posed some questions about the climate change agenda that's facing uh, 
the world and you place it in a globalization context. I don't have answers to those questions, but I do know that unless there is public trust in how those questions are developed into policies and how those questions are responded to, communities will not follow. And those climate change challenges risk not being met. And I guess that's probably in terms of the generation here, not my generation, we're past, but the generation here uh, in front of us, um, it's going to be an enormous challenge. And if the public institutions are not adequately resourced, and if the public don't have confidence in them, then addressing that challenge will be extremely difficult. And when I talk about public institutions being resourced, I don't just mean money. In fact, it's got as much to do with the quality of the people. And so I would invite your graduates this afternoon who will no doubt have a portfolio career because that's what most young people have now. To consider a little piece of that career in public service, whether it be at home or indeed for those of you who are international in your home nations or in international institutions or in not-for-profit organizations. Because trust relies on smart people taking debates to the next level. I was very, very um, taken by the remarks from uh, your faculty leader, and I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, about the importance of journalism in democracy. And I would say the same uh, about the quality of the public institutions to question themselves and then to develop policy for whatever challenge uh, is lying before them from time to time. You, you referenced um, President in your, uh, or Anya did in her citation, about the work I did internationally. Um, how Ireland is perceived internationally is heavily dependent on the trust and confidence in those institutions. Foreign direct investment is heavily dependent on confidence in those institutions. And the growth of your own college is dependent, I would suggest, on confidence uh, in those institutions. So I encourage you all in your careers ahead to be mindful of the importance of having trust in public institutions. And if, you, if there isn't, then that needs to be ventilated by your journalism students and challenged and questioned in an open and transparent way uh, in order for our democracy to develop. If this award today recognizes that I have contributed in some small way to improving the confidence in some of our public institutions in this country, then I am extremely gratified. The achievements generously attributed to me in Anya's citation could not have been achieved in any organization that I worked without the support of very talented and dedicated teams of people that worked with me. And in accepting this uh, award from your president, I am very keen to thank them and I would like to pay tribute to them uh, as well. Finally, I would like to wish all of you this afternoon as you head out in the next stage of your career, uh, every success. I'd like to wish the college success in its ongoing uh, development. I have no doubt, knowing your president, that he already has an eye on some other step forward because that's been the story of, of Griffith College uh, over the last, what, 30 years or longer? So, Gunnari and Boher live Gulair, Gunnari and Thaw live Gurmil Magav. Ian Erika, Aguina Ushla, Karim Kreaklesh and Sharmanis, Kondavak to the Avrunna, our Alamorian Kalashta, Baron Buikas live Gulair. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony for the purpose of conferring awards on the graduates of the college. My best wishes and thanks to you all. <laughs> While the graduates are here with us, I'd like to take this opportunity to briefly mention the Griffith College Alumni Network. With over 30,000 graduates living in Ireland, Europe, and over 104 countries worldwide, the network is an excellent way to stay in touch with your classmates, your fellow graduates, and the college.
The network is also proving to be a most valuable resource for graduates who are seeking or changing employment. Details of the network are available on GriffithAlumniNetwork.com and on the college's website. On behalf of the college, I would like to invite all of the guests of the graduates here today to enjoy a glass of wine, a cup of tea and coffee, and some refreshments immediately afterwards in the college's restaurant downstairs. I would ask the graduates to oblige us for a few more moments while we capture and film just how lovely you look today. So once the photographs have been taken, we can rejoin your guests and celebrate your achievements together in style. I'd also like to remind the graduates that the graduation party will be held this evening in Copperface Jacks at 10 o'clock. And the tickets are available from the Students' Union. So we hope you have an excellent time there. Please stand for the academic procession.